I ain't never went to counseling. I went to therapy. I, how I grew up, they had us praying to a white Jesus all this time. Why does the color matter? Yeah. I seen Caitlyn Jenner came out against it. That she was like, that's crazy. Most of the women rappers that's out right now talk about a new report came out today. They say Billie Eilish, Nicki Minaj, and Stevie Wonder, and 200 other artists. Irritable male syndrome is it's things that I went through that I experienced that's very traumatic that I don't want to talk about. He push past those feelings and he think about his vision. He think about his will, his plan, his ideas and shit. He, he, he that's man. If it's a problem, it's a solution. That's not acceptable for men to do. I'm building, I write down my goals and I'm executing, I'm on my mission, tunnel vision. I like the setting of man to man. Man, this is like a, a safe space to just yeah. speak freely upon everything. Like we talk like men. Talk like men. Peace family, welcome to the Man to Man show, where we talk ass guys. Cause somebody had DM me the other day and say, take the like y'all. Come on. Cause they say y'all are guys. I so knew that was telling. They, they say, they say, so if y'all say like, that mean y'all ain't consider y'all self guys. So we gonna change it up for them. We talk did. ass and like. How you feeling today though? Nothing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> man, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling fantastic. I'm feeling amazing, man. I'm brilliant. Man, how was your weekend, man? Man, it's good. Um, I don't really trip off weekends. I don't believe in like waiting on Friday or Saturday. That's like, that's like, that's that's like slavery. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, waiting you for that? a day to enjoy life. Like I seen uh, shout out to my brother MG Morgan guy, but he had posted, um, and it was I think it was like on Wednesday. He was like, tomorrow is not Friday, and it's not even Thursday. And people was like relating because you know most people got work days. Mm -hmm. And I remember those days to where I was waiting for Friday. I was waiting for Saturday so I could breathe again and feel free and like really enjoy life. And that's why I say most people work, they don't live. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like even if you work a job, you should look forward to whatever you're doing so that you can enjoy your life. But like waiting for a day off is like holding your breath and waiting to breathe. Mm -hmm. Well, I had asked you about the weekend because as you know, I don't celebrate it no more. I grew up celebrating it. But, you know, it was Easter over the weekend. Mm, and I seen, I seen a couple of y'all um, celebrating Ramadan, celebrating Easter, too. But we're going to say that to after Ramadan. You did to talk about that. But one thing that did happen over the uh, weekend was Joe Biden declared Easter Sunday to be Transgender Day of Visibility. You did. Congratulations to him, man. Mm. Maybe he got a son or a daughter or a daughter that's a son that recently transitioned. Yeah. I seen Caitlyn Jenner came out against it. It was like, yeah, she was like, oh, she was like, that's crazy. <laughs> crazy <laughs> work. <laughs> but <laughs> no, nah, what I'm saying is like, bro, you about to I'm going to get hella No, nah, look, I'm going I'm to take this I ain't going like to lie, that, you right? might grow. <laughs> Let me see. If your brain swell up, that increases your height. <laughs> no, Superman really work. I'll be on this. We got work to do. We on that Superman. This episode has been sponsored Woo! by Superman. Take yours, tap in, increase your focus, increase your energy right now. Make sure your mind is operating at a hyper speed where your memory is advanced, higher than the greatest artificial intelligence on the planet Earth. Cause you tapped into that human intelligence and this gonna help you do it. We are specially formulated with all of the right ingredients so that your speech, your vocabulary, your mind, your memory is super smart. This is the new tropic that you and your whole entire tribe need tap in right now get your supermind at goldewater.com <laughs> but what was said <laughs> was that um essentially um they felt you know disrespected by the fact that anything but the lord or jesus should be celebrated mm. that day and nothing should be you know taking over that day and i think that you know christians got to deal with that you know of course i don't celebrate easter but i think that you know, America is becoming more and more of a godless country and even tasteless. Mm. You feel me? Because perhaps that was more tasteless than anything that whether it wasn't thoughtful whatsoever. And I think that it's just a desperate attempt to try to appease a voter block. You feel me to win? And like I said, the last episode, it just seems sad and more sad for their party. Yeah, it's, it seemed like he just pulling everything out the bag he got. Donald now, Trump recently just paid that bill. 
that they said that he owed. You know what I'm saying? He got that done. And then, of course, he threw his stock on the uh, market mm. and uh, it went up. Of course, it went down as well as the market. So, yeah. you know, you open more for attack when you got a public company as well because they can try to short it. They can do all sort of different things. So I think, first of all, like, I don't think we really appreciate how strategic this whole war has been between the Republican and Democrats. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what I would say on that number one, because like they really been going back and forth. There's really like if you ever watch the show Billions, like Donald Trump has been pulling mm -hmm. every rabbit out the hat. He really been making a uh, 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 bunnies lay eggs. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. He's been showing up in his Easter best dealing with the stress, you know. Um, And look, I'm not voting. So I'm not telling you to go vote for the man whatsoever. So don't think just because I have an observational read on the situation that it is a representation of my support for one character over the other. Now, for everybody who want to know, like, is this official? Like, Transgender Day is going to be on Easter. That is not official. It just so happened to fall on the same Sunday. It's Easter this year because, you know, Easter be moving around and shit. You know, you know how that go. Uh, he want to make sure y'all got the information. Yeah, yeah. Cause I, Leave I, me accurate cause, today. Nah, because, you know, <laughs> it be people in the comments talking about, how long you doing um, misrepresentation? You spread misinformation, all that, you know. So we're going to get it right. You did. So I made a post the other day, and it kind of went viral. Your boy Vladimir Putin, he went in the vault, and he found something from the, uh, I want to say the 1400s, some pictures of Jesus. And on the paintings, Jesus was black. Now, yeah, sure. this, Jesus. Yeah, this, like this may be news to some people, but we already knew he was black. <laughs> what other color would he be? Yeah, but I, I I feel like it was like um strategic of him to release that information. Right Man, now. The, the, why would why does the color matter? What you mean? Why it matter? Cause <laughs> shit, I, how, how I grew up, they had us praying to a white Jesus all this time. You know? <laughs> oh man, I said that on a high level of once once. That's the only time. Yeah, you know I mean, color don't matter is when people talking about Jesus. But black people was the only people who really thought that the color didn't matter. Cause we was praying. They was, they know we. You know what I mean? Your favorite rapper probably still got a white Jesus tatted on him, which is crazy work. Yeah. He's so gangster, but he got a white Jesus tatted on him. That's crazy work. And got a white Jesus piece. I denounce you. Mm. <laughs> why, why do you feel like he just now, you know what I'm saying, releasing that? Because I'm pretty sure he's been found. Yeah, obviously, man, it's wartime. It's propaganda. He trying to get, he working with the African brothers. You know what I'm saying? He yeah. trying to get the world on his side, things of that nature, man. He could have released that uh, shit when, when they first found it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I ain't doing me no favors. We already knew this. You know what I'm saying? First of all, listen, man. Um, Jesus don't sound nothing but like a black radical militant. Mm. What else does he sound like? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you go describe this man worse than everything he was doing. Shoot, I can easily see myself in Jesus. Mm. That's why I like the book of Clarence. Some people didn't like it. I liked it, man. It was Jesus. Bro, he was out there moving. The Nobody miracle. talking about the book of Clarence. Yeah, but <laughs> I mean, crazy. look, the the thing about it is, you know, we put it out there because the, the reason that the color matters because the truth matters. There has been whole entire agendas that hijack history. You know what I'm saying? And when you're dealing with the most prominent figure in human history, his color matters so that you deal with his people correctly. You know what I mean? So that if you don't want to deal with the wrath of God coming down on you, how can you hate a man? Right? How can you love a man, right? But then hate the color of the people that look just like him. Mm. That makes no sense. The color matters more than anything to me at this point, because we are now, that, at that time, racism did not exist. Not as we have it today, yeah. right? The hermetic prophecies hadn't came about. You know what I mean? Um, all of this stuff that has spread and what it is today wasn't about that. So you talking about all of these people saying that they are devout Jesus worshipers. Mm. And Jesus was a melanated man. And you telling me that don't matter? So, no, I want to see all you races denounce Jesus. Yeah. That's why the color matters. Yeah. Because we want to see if your faith is as strong as your racism. Yeah, I, I, I'm saying it was strategic of him to announce that during Easter weekend, though. You know, yeah. That shit, you know, people need to know this information, though. Come on now. But speaking of the weekend, we had went to a um, a black e man. We went to an water event. To water to <laughs> what they say, a hater see Jesus walk on water and say hey. it's because he can't swim. 
I mean, who else been like Jesus? Come on, Nate. Don't, don't act like we don't be walking around like we Jesus every day. That sounds like black people in America. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. That's how we operate daily. We operate like Jesus. Yeah. We go on that reference. When that people see us, they just like, Jesus. That boy cold. <laughs> But now speaking of, um, we're going to get over into this AI talk because this is something I want to talk about. We went to an event over the weekend with, what's the good brother from the Black Eyed Peas? Uh, Will, I Will I Am. Am. Will I Am. So, you know, this event, I thought it was going to be something new that I was getting introduced to. But however, the event was about them utilizing other musicians' voices through AI. And, you know, creating music and new sounds and all of this type of shit, you know. However, I seen a new a new report came out today. They say Billie Eilish, Nicki Minaj, and Stevie Wonder, and 200 other artists calling for AI protection. Now, they claiming that um this AI developers are using artists' music and feeding it into mm -hmm. the machine. And it's going to... Um, it's going to come to a point where it replaced a uh, human rights and, you know, and all of they, um, I think it's going to be interesting because yes, you go be intellectual property. Um, you're going to be able to tokenize your voice. Right. I mm -hmm. think at the end of the day, what they really should want to do is monetize any aspects of their voice. You're not going to stop people from feeding your voice, your likeness, all of that into machine. People, artists have been inspired by other artists throughout time. Like people have been sampling music, mm -hmm. using styles, that whole nine. So I think that that gets a little muddy, right, when you talk about that. But the the, the thing is, is like if somebody's using your direct voice, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying, then you should get paid for that, right? Just like any other thing. And they got tools that can scrape the internet for that. I think that it's about having, yes, that protection of your likeness and your intellectual property, right, your personal likeness to where you basically, you take your voice, you upload it, right? Um, so therefore, if your voice is detected anywhere across the Internet, then you should be compensated. Now, there's actually models that's already doing this. The lady from Kim Possible did that. She did the voiceover for Kim Possible. She has now thousands, tens of thousands and maybe hundreds of thousands of people who is now utilizing her voice for their content. Right. So imagine, you know, there's a lot of people that be taking, you know, um, uh, um, bargain versions of Morgan Freeman. And they be met utilizing his voice, right? People like utilizing Snoop voice. But there's a lot of fake copies of that. So why wouldn't you want to actually have a real copy of your voice that's utilized across this great landscape? Because you're not going to be able to know when somebody is doing right, it sometime. Right. It may be doing it in Africa or India or China. Now, you know what I mean? So I say have software to where you upload in your likeness and then it detects it across the Internet. And then you get paid anytime it's being streamed and monetized. Now, I, I see a lot of people are worried about AI replacing artists in their music. However, I don't think it'll work with um hip-hop. Man, nobody want to listen to yeah. AI artists. And then on top of that, when it comes to like these new rappers, there's always new lingo that come out. You First know? of all, there's... AI a, can't keep up with there's lingo. There's already... An, artists don't pop because they're talented. They pop because there's a machine behind them. Mm. Right? You got billion-dollar machines behind these people. Hundreds of millions of dollars behind them. That's why they pop. We have a lot of artists already that's talented and some way more talented. Some artists that's mainstream billboards, number one hits. You know what I mean? We got millions of artists across the world. So oversaturating it with AI artists ain't go all of a sudden people want to listen to that. No, the only reason that those things will pop off is because of marketing dollars pushed behind them. They get the operation behind it. You know what I mean? So... It, you and you see somebody pushing an AI artist, which they will have to do, then you can just reject it. But it ain't gonna just be music out there. You just happen to find it and it's AI and you loved it because that's not how we find artists anyway. We find people we connect to who they are, their personality, their story, where they come from, they style, all of that. I think art is too personal. Like music is too personal for AI to even be able to compete with humans. It's a, it's a, it's enough artists that already, you know what I'm saying. Uh, I, I'll be watching the, on the radio. I'll be seeing the freestyles of different artists that's out there. What the hell can AI even offer to, you know what I mean, the list of artistry that's out there now? It can't do anything to compete. I don't think so. I think all they can do is probably help artists understand their voice a little more, right? Like, I think artists being able to collect data on themselves to master their voice a little better is key. It's like, you know, I heard this uh, communication coach talking about how he went into um, a coaching session, right, 
with a lady that was going to teach him how to communicate better. And he walked in there and for two minutes straight, she was playing one key. Boom, 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 boom. And he just listening like, yo. And then she asked him, what did you feel? And he said, nothing. And then she went back and she played. She started playing this whole love song. Then she asked him what he felt. He was like, sad. And he was like, yes, I'm going to teach you how to play the keys. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But with your voice, because your voice has multiple keys in it. So if you're monotone, you're only getting that one key. You know what I'm saying? But if you're creating that colorful symphony, you're getting that 19 keys. Because I play all the keys in my mind. You know what I'm talking about? So good artists, they play multiple keys, mm. learning how to use fluctuations in their voice, learning how to use the baritone, learning how to use the soft part so that you feel the range of emotions as you're connected to it. That's, that's the human aspect of it. You feel me? Mm. Even if AI gets as good as different things, there's no connection to it, right? AI doesn't have a story. So who cares? Speaking of good artists, What's I heard that you just say that, right? That? I seen a, um, a news clip that went viral a couple of weeks ago. It said a 14-year-old girl is mad at her mom because she didn't let her go to a Megan Thee Stallion concert. And the mom, her, um, her point was, shit, when we grew up, we had suitable music for teenagers, you know. She was like, she didn't want to send her daughter to go see nobody talking about sex and, you know what I'm saying, Did half they naked. have suitable music, though? I mean, well, we had a, um, I mean, we I had more I options. I feel like mo most of the women rappers that's out right now talk about prostitution. Yeah, I mean, no, I wouldn't want my my young 14, impressionable daughter mm -hmm. um, to have a role model that I wouldn't want her to become. Yeah. Right? So. Absolutely not. I understand that. But at the same time, um, I do acknowledge that, you know, I just watched that documentary Freaknik. Uh, I do like, you know what I mean? So it's, <laughs> hey, the mamas was bending over backwards too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Throwing it back. You know what I mean? Listening to uh to all of the crazy, you know what but, I mean? But that don't make it Uncle right. Uncle Luke and everybody else during their time. That don't make it right. You know what I mean? Getting that sexual <laughs> healing at another time. We know what was going on in their lyrics. Yeah. But here's the thing, because people look at the past and justify behavior in the present. It's not a justification because the, the, the point is to evolve. Mm -hmm. Right. So did that make that generation better or worse? And especially in the over sexualized, hyper sexualized environments, just because something happened in the past don't mean it should be repeated in the present. So the goal is the reason that we're not doing it is because we went through that and we want you to become better than us. Children don't care about that. They want to be stimulated by the experience because they're impressionable and they're influenced. Yeah. Right? So, yes, we need more role models so that these children can be impressioned by somebody we actually want them to become in the future. And we break the cycles of what the entertainment industry has thrown on us. I remember when you used to um, get all the little uh, wristbands when we was growing up. You used to go to all the Bow Wow concerts, all the screen tours. I remember that. First, Bow Wow was a little man hero. No, nah, I remember that. All, of my, all of my favorite rappers were tall. <laughs> that was you doing the little Bow Wow dance. Yeah, you, used yeah. to, you used to pull up on the block hitting the Bow Wow dance. We used to have to smack you in the back of your head and tell you to relax. You know, man. dang well. Because cause you used to talk about how Jermaine Dupree and Bow Wow made you feel like you can do anything. Because they, they were the short kings. Let's let's be honest. Like if we have an open that, conversation, if you believe that, I got bro, some ocean view property in Alaska to sell you, right bro. Now. You must have you must have found something on the blockchain to sell that's tokenized because it's true. So we gonna we gonna stay on the music real quick, right? I seen your brother Kanye West. Well, he he say he call him Yay now. So I'm gonna talk Yay, formerly known as Kanye West. He's being sued right now. Did you hear about about the um incident? Oh, he sued because he wanted to turn booze <laughs> into prisons or something crazy. Yeah, that was that's that's the thing. But this is my thing, right? How can you sue somebody for an idea that never came into fruition? I can see if he actually built the cages in the school, you know. You know, I think that might be a good idea to sue people for ideas because people be having some stupid ideas, and we need to stop them before they happen. Don't even think about it. <laughs> well, I feel like shit, the person, the person who's suing them should have just told them that was a stupid idea right then and there. Then wait a year to sue them. Hey, listen, I don't care about the lawsuit part. I think like rich people get sued all the time. Yeah. He, used, he, used to, he used to go stay in and out. I just want to know why was he thinking about building a prison in the school? When the whole thing is we trying to stop the pipeline to prison 
Mm. And he trying to build the exact pipeline. I feel like schools are already designed like Drake. I, I got to read the article because I, I I feel like it got to be something else, too. We went to uh, Roosevelt High School. Roosevelt was the prison. That shit was like prison. That wasn't a pipeline to prison. That was a juvenile <laughs> detention center disguised as a high school. I know people. I know a lot of people who went to school with you had ankle monitors on, all Bro, type of shit. Bro, ankle monitors. Like, that's crazy. It was crackheads. People were selling crack. Um... The 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 officers at the school were mm. real officers. These cats, they some of them were gang members. They had reputation in the streets, mm -hmm. so some of them was connected to the gangs that was going to the school. Because Roosevelt was in the middle of like a a whole bunch of different hoods, so everybody went there. So if you had beef on the weekend, you bringing it back on a weekday. You know what I mean? And now, of course, your mother don't know about it, so she forcing you to go to school. You get beat up or shot up at outside of school. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And then it keep on going like it was normal. Like they have raids. To where they just, if they think you selling something, they just grab you out of nowhere, yoke you up, bring you to the back, check your pockets and everything. You feel me? We at school, lunchtime, eating slop. It was crazy. It was, it was barbaric. You know what I'm talking about? We grew up man, in some painted situations. Was a nerd in that Real radicalized situations. Stop. Let he, them tell it. He was a real hey, nerd. But he the only up. person that had a book bag with Hey, let books. me tell you, just, I had to tell you time. Yeah, I used the books to smack somebody. Stop, you feel me? Stop the kids. You know what I'm so what did I get what did I get expelled for then? Guilty by association? No, I got expelled <laughs> for putting hands on a young man that didn't know who I was. They expelled me, but how did I get back in? All right, we ain't we tell that story another time. Yeah. Graduated on time, didn't have to pay no senior dues if you really want to know. Information is everywhere. You can log into YouTube right now and type in almost any subject. But I'm going to be honest with you. You won't even know if it's human generated or if it's just based on the algorithm that figured out that you wanted to find this subject. It queried your information, created an automated process so they can get your eyeballs to try to sell you a product or get advertisement dollars. Humans need humans. We don't work and operate that well learning from machines because it's the connection to the information, it's the connection to the process that allows us to grow our neurons, it's that connection that allows us to be able to tap into that tapestry of thought to where we need to learn and be in environments to where we feel aspirational and we are inspired and it's empathetic. So today it's not about just having access to the information, it's not just about being able to have democratized education everywhere, it's about connection. Are you actually connected to it? When you are in a community, it reinforces that environment of connection. And that's why being a part of high level is so important. So you are reinforcing an environment with that human connection. I see you, you see me, you feel felt, you want to learn. Information and data, statistics and numbers and automation is fine, especially if you want to create income and utilize the technology for such. The human connection has always been a real source of learning. Source of Don't learning. just go for the information. Go for the community and go for the connection. I went to an event with you one time, right? And you had introduced me to somebody. And when I shook his hand, I realized he had his nails painted. <laughs> no, I real mean, talk. So I wanted to them to take my my handshake back, but it just it just reminded me of something. You know, I seen um Duke guard Jerry McCain has signed an NIL wow, deal man. with beauty and nail polish brand Sally Hassan. Wow, that's crazy work. That's crazy work. Listen, man. Um, they want a whole generation to be broke rich. Mm. They want you to be handicapped. You know what I'm saying? They don't, they, don't, they don't want you to be masculine. They want you to be feminine. That ain't the number you're supposed to play. You know what I'm talking about? So, of course, they do that, of course, to spark controversy, yeah. to create marketing. More people know about it. It gains more exposure. It's something to talk about. Yeah. Right? And then, of course, it falls in line with the emasculation, right, that they believe that men should tone down their masculine energy. And with the decrease of testosterone, that's already happening, right? And we're going to get into that in a little bit. But yeah. when we talk about, like, fathers, that's father's job. That's man. it. Let's just do it. We're going to end it with that. It's the father's job to see the young man with the right amount of values, go through the rites of passage, bring him up in a community to where he makes the decisions that are aligned with his values so that we have solid, yeah. clear-minded young men that develop into grown men that won't sell their soul for no goal.
Now I remember when we first had seen the story over the Don't weekend. Don't hold out for the scout. We had we uh you had asked me what I um would have took the deal, right? Now the only way I would have took a deal like that is if I was promoting getting manicures and pedicures, and you can do the clear fingernail polish. That's it. Clear. Keep it clear if you're a man. Flat out. At the end of the day. But all the different colors and designs and shit, come on now. Y'all is going too far. Like, real talk. <laughs> it's gateway paint. Gateway paint. Explain that. What that mean? The clear polish is a gateway paint. Next thing you know, it's mascara on your cheek. Man. <laughs> Next thing you know, you got a little tiny purse and some skinny jeans. Next thing you know, your feminine care routine that made you feminine. Nah, nah. Next thing you know, you got different colors. So, so it you got your expressions as a nah, man. Nah, so you don't and think matches, a man can it go. It matches your jeans. Hold on. Or now they're going to be getting the nail to Master Jordan. Nah, cut it out. You don't think man can go and get a pedicure, a manicure, and get a clear coat. Listen, That's not masculine no more? I didn't know it ever was. I've never done it. My brother's never done it. My father. So never you never got it. a pedicure, manicure before. I never got no clear coat. I tell every time I go in there, I tell me, give me the real man special. <laughs> What's the real man special? Okay, I can handle you, no problem. <laughs> I go in there, set the feet, they massage me up. You can't. You feel me? Man. They get me right. They hit you the shoulders. Down. You feel me? And um, yeah, they just zip, 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 zip. They get me right, and then that's it. Now, you know what? I walk Come out. to think about it, it don't even be um, nail polish. It be some little little, little scrub thing that they hit, and it make now, it look like I will this, say this. Um, nail Men shining. need to groom their nails and their yeah. toes. And they're, like grooming and feminine care is uh, hygiene, right? It's very important, right? Being clean. We talked about this before. Cleanliness is godliness. Mm -hmm. Right. So you definitely have to make sure that your hygiene is up to par. Listen, I know cats that do it. You know, I grew up in a bay where everybody thought that they was a pimp. So a lot of pimps did it because they had extra feminine routines. You feel me? Because they were doing the things that they considered the women like on them. You know what I'm talking about? So I grew up seeing men do that with the clear polish. I just never thought that it was for me. Mm. You feel me? If you do that, I'm not holding no strikes against your manhood, to be honest. It's all fun and jokes. Now, I think the colorfuls, I think it go into a part where you participate in then too much of your feminine side and you need to learn how to balance that out, you know what I mean, with your masculine energies. But, you know, this the generation. This generation mm -hmm. is on some wild type of time. And I don't go around policing people's nails. I'm not the nail police polish. So I swear reason I don't be speaking on it like that. But I know that people in my circle, unless you dressed up like the crow and you outside avenging, you know what I'm saying, avengers of God, y'all don't need to see you with no black nails. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take it to uh, another topic I wanted to get into, right? I was um scrolling one night, and I seen this guy from the U.K., and he had, you know, came to the States for the first time, and he chose to go to Atlanta. Mm. So his partner was asking him, like, shit, how was Atlanta? Like, would you recommend it? He said, no, he never going back. And his reason might be, what, what you think the reason was first before I tell you the reason? That's a good, I listen, there could be many reasons. Yeah. The but but what's the first reason that popped in your mind? Really I think quick. he was trying to go out one night. Mm. He walked into the wrong establishment. And he said, man, why is it 99.9% .9 dudes in here? And then. <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah, for real though. It, he actually was talking about something that was real valid, which is why I chose it as a topic, right? He says he went out there, right, and everybody had guns. It's an open and carry lot. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Open state. Now, he was scared out of his mind. He said he went out to the club, and everybody had a gun on him. Like, it's just normal and shit. Like, you know, he said he was like, People was in a high shit, but you know they got their gun on them, so he trying to look, and then he see the guy mugging them, and all. He just, his anxiety level had raised up, you dig? So it got, it got me thinking, like, in America, we real life live like that, like it's normal. And then you got the people who don't, who never been to experience that type of shit, they scared shitless. Like, this is not normal. This is not how humans should um, be living. What you think about that? 
Yeah, I mean, we do a lot of things that him was not supposed to be doing. People butcher up their face just to make themselves feel better about mm. their looks. You know what I'm saying? I People walk around with, you know, it, it used to be cats just walking around with guns on their hips. Now women walking around with extra hips on their hips. Mm -mm. You know what I'm saying? It's all bad out here. But I, I would say this, man, never operate from a place of fear. That's I think that all human beings have to get to this place where you can be instantly safe once you become fearless. It's not that there's not pending danger, but we respond to danger in different ways based on our trauma system, right? Or flight, flaunt. There's different ways that our, our um, nervous system reacts. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And being in America, well, yes, that's the wild, wild west, but the way you operate when you're fearless is a way to where you get to win every single day of life. You know what I'm saying? That fear produces anxiety. That fear produces stress. That fear creates invisible enemies. That fear have you hallucinating scenarios that's never going to happen and producing self-fulfilling prophecies because mm -hmm. you think it's going to happen. So if you want to operate at a higher state of consciousness, then you have to learn to eliminate the fears. So it don't matter if I'm going to a place that has people uh, uh, heavily armed. It don't matter if I'm going to whatever type of environment, you post that your faith is supposed to be bigger than your fears. So you got any topics you wanted to talk about? Yes, man? sir. You feel me? There's a lot, a lot of IMS going on. Mm. You understand me? Um, so you know how women, they have their periods, yeah. right? If they ain't having a baby, then they, they flush out the blood systems and everything that's going on in their body, right? Clean out the toxins, make sure that they good. And then during this time, right, you know, woman mood goes through different changes, right? She shifts as she's going through this. This is this is a cold situation. Never had to deal with it. So, you know, I thank Allah, you feel me, for being born with the X and Y. But when you're talking about, you know, um, PMSing, yeah. right, there's also a thing called IMS, mm. Irritable Male Syndrome. Irritable male syndrome is times throughout the month where a man hormones may fluctuate as well. Maybe he's not producing the same amount of testosterone, right? Now, this can happen from a multitude of different things. Stress, anxiety, food, lack of exercise, right? It may be because his girl is PMSing and he ain't messing. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But it's a real thing, especially in society. As I mentioned, testosterone levels are down. What does that do to men, right? That's going to be more stress, more depression, lack of energy, lack of libido, mm -hmm. lack of feeling like a man as you start to age and as you start to go through these different processes. Men start to lose hair. Men start to lose muscle mass, all sort of different things. So you have to be conscious of making sure that you're living in operation to make sure you maintain a balance and that you are constantly observing yourself at the same time, right? Why don't you, why are your energy levels low right now? Why are you easily irritated? Why are you angry? Always finding the source and the root because I think in this over chemicalized world, over, you know, drug use, substance abuse, smoking all this weed, mm -hmm. people have that IMS. You feel me? So you may be talking about a woman on her period, but why is breath so ultra irritated during this state in time? You feel me? Yeah. I think it's key. Yeah, so the solution to that is you got to change up your your daily routine. You got to change your whole lifestyle up. You did instead of reacting all the time. Sometimes you might need counseling. You might need to talk to somebody or something. You know that can Nobody give you some this. other options. You did. I I'm just, man, I, I'm just gonna say, bro, went to counseling before. Uh, I shouldn't even say this, huh? Uh, uh, I ain't never went to counseling. I went to therapy. Oh, uh, it's, it's the same thing. Same thing. Counseling just sounds soft. Hey, you know, I went to therapy. I went to therapy, thug therapy. You feel yeah. me? We talked about all those times I had to, you know what I mean? I, mean? I ain't going to lie, though. No, I, I, I thought about. I had two about... sessions. The problem with it, not to cut your, your wisdom, the problem was the fact that I felt like my therapist needed me. Mm. And she was stressed out. She was seeing too many clients. It's kind of like having a um a public defender versus having right. a high-class paid lawyer who's really focused on your case. She seemed like a public defender. You know what I mean? Like, she didn't even seem like she was always there, not listening. So I felt like, shoot, that was causing a little more trauma mm. as well. So it's then then I'm like, like, I'm I'm reading her energy. I feel like she got issues and problems. 
Now I feel like she listening, but I I'll me, start, feel me, like I start me, talking to let me her ask you something and helping quick. her out in her therapy. So yeah, I ain't been again since. How did you go about choosing your therapist? Oh, it was just through this app. It wasn't nothing special. <laughs> it wasn't nothing special, to be honest. It was a black lady at that. <laughs> yeah. But I just felt like, honestly, uh, if you are a therapist, you know, um, you should not go into a session burnt out. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because that can create another trauma. Now you got another person that you feel like is half listening to you, not paying attention. You feel me? And I know that there's a lot that comes along with being a therapist. Mm. You're empathizing and listening to people's problems, and there's a thing called empathy burnout. When you're constantly empathizing with people, putting yourself in their shoes and what it's like to be them, you get burnt out. So the goal is to have compassion, not empathy, because compassion makes you you energized and want to make a change. Well, empathy makes you feel too much of someone else's experience over and over and over and over. All right, so like I said, I had thought about going to therapy, right? However... It's things that I went through that I experienced that's very traumatic that I don't want to talk about with a random person, right? So how do I go about, you know, releasing this energy without it being a stranger? You know, releasing it to a stranger or whatnot. Don't tell me. If that's <laughs> what you're trying to ask. I'm not about to be up there. <laughs> no. <laughs> Look, he tried to, now I'm serious, he tried to use this podcast nah, to get nah, me to his therapist. Y'all seen that? That was slick. No, nah, because a lot. In nah, the black nah. community, um, so that. you know, we I, I did the interview with the hood therapist. I think he'd mm. be somebody good to talk to, um, just because you know that's somebody that you may feel like you can relate to. You may not even realize it is therapy by the time you in it, but you know, I think that what should be normal is like we having ciphers and circles of men mm. to where we talking. You feel me? To where you don't mind being in a state to where you're sharing, sharing over a fire. You know what I mean? Alchemy from you know, uh, from pain to power. It's like you sharing to release. I think we need to normalize again, having these ciphers, having these bonfires, having these yeah. fireside chats to where we can be real. Like, you know, throughout this journey, you're going to go through ups and downs. You're going to go through all sort of different situations. And there's the human side of being a man. That means that you feel emotions. That means you feel sadness. That means you feel anger. That means you feel disappointment. That means you feel regret. That means you feel mm -hmm. shame. That means you feel guilt. And so, yeah, having somebody to talk to is an outlet to express and release. And I think you ain't going to find that unless you kind of experiment. I see people, they go through multiple therapists until mm -hmm. they find somebody that they feel like is the best for them, that they can relate to, that they want to talk to. And normally, you're not going into a session just sharing everything on the first go, right? You're building a rapport with that person, building a connection with that person. And then over time throughout the sessions, then you feel more comfortable sharing because now you feel like you are in a safe place. Because it's, it's like, you know, when you find a new coping mechanism or, or a healthy coping mechanism, it becomes a point in time where that coping mechanism don't work for you no more. You know, I think that's the whole thing is like, don't look for coping mechanisms because they all go burn out. Because yeah. it's, it's like taking the same milligram of Tylenol every day. Your body's going to be resistant to it and you're going to start feeling that pain. And you're going to need something stronger. Instead, dealing with the root of the pain so you don't longer have to take the Tylenol. Uh -huh. Coping mechanisms are not good. It's, it's ways to numb the pain instead of actually deal with the source of it. So uh -huh. the goal is to not find coping mechanisms. The goal is to find healing. Uh -huh. It ain't. A, I, I just want to say this. I got six brothers, two sisters, right? I got um, two sisters from a different mother, same father. I had one sister work in a psychiatric clinic. <laughs> mm. I had uh, one brother that I only met maybe once or twice because he was in jail most of my life. You know what I'm saying? Um, my older brother's currently in prison. I got another younger brother in jail, right? Um, I deal with a myriad of mental health issues and problems and traumas, adverse childhood experiences, exposure to incarceration, exposure to violence, exposure to domestic violence, exposure to drug abuse, substance abuse, all sort of different things. All of that range from my childhood up until now. So I understand the necessity to have these coping mechanisms that can be therapeutic for a moment that will get you through the day. Yeah. But it's like if you don't deal with these things, I see it in all of my brothers and sisters at different spectrum and ranges. I see it within myself as an observer of it all. You know, and we all have different ways that we go about trying to deal with this process. 
but you there, there's nothing better than finding that time alone and that stillness in nature. Mm. You know what I mean? There's nothing better than finding that stillness and organizing your life to where you can think. Because sometimes is you can't get you can't deal with this problem because you have 20 other problems you never dealt with. So they so stacked up, right, that you can't even focus because you haven't dealt with the tabs that you already have open. Mm. So that stillness allows you that moment in time to where you can go back through these and then you can collate them, meaning that you can organize them and figure out, okay, where do I want to start? And starting at the beginning is always best because you can root out a lot of the other issues that you have. So a therapist is always going to ask you about your parents. They're going to ask you about the relationship mm -hmm. between your parents. They're going to ask you about how was the household. They're going to take you all the way back from when you was a child and some of those experiences. And a lot of people don't want to deal with those emotions. Sometimes it's easier to blame the world than to deal with the root of the problem. Right. So I think that, you know, having that submersion in self to where you go back in your past and you pivot your perspective on what happened. So as an adult, you're not still dealing with the child that was that dealt with the initial situation. Right. And then covered it up with coping mechanisms and bravado. Yeah. And now you're dealing with the side effects of a uh, damaged child as a grown avatar. Because uh, I feel like shit, like like I said, like I. Me personally, like I already like talking about traumatic shit, especially because I know like like we 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 try to be futurists over here, you know. Yeah. We always trying to work on something next, something new. But at the same time, I think it becomes unhealthy when you don't address none of the issues, you know. Because yeah. shit, moving forward, how and you how, you can't even really celebrate or enjoy it in the moment because you like you said, you got those twenty other things that you didn't work on. And I feel like out of out of me and all of my siblings or whatnot, they look at me as the strongest because I done been through the most, you know, the most traumatic shit ever that you could think about. And I'm still, like, flourishing in life and not complaining, you know, shit. To some people, they'll trade shoes with me in the instance, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, shit, I got a lot of trauma that I really didn't deal with. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's your journey as a man right now. Yeah. You know, like, I think, like, being in the public eye, being a leader, it's like the journey of being imperfect, mm -hmm. you know, trying to keep up with the expectation of what people think you should look like versus, like, I'm a human being. You feel me? So, you know, regardless of what you see on the outside, it's only because I'm fighting battles on the inside yeah. that I'm that I'm, I'm supposedly winning. Sometimes you, you have days where you don't win. You feel me? You have days where the accumulation of things just, just over heightened. And so you got to have these, these tools you use. You feel me? Like I take walks sometimes by myself. Like today I took a walk. I had to leave my phones behind and let me just walk and think. And it connected me to my senses. It connected me to myself. It connected me to when I was a child and I used to do that. Mm -hmm. You feel me? I have to take times where I'm, um, I think one of the key things is, and we can, we can have a, I'm going to do a high level on this, like the science and the protocols to it. But one of the things is learning about it increases your ability, right, to do something about it. So, like, yeah. when you learn about the sources of trauma, you learn and you become aware of it, it empowers you to make you feel like you can now do something about it. So, anytime I have a problem, I study it, right? Mm -hmm. So, when I want to heal, I'm studying psychology. I'm studying trauma. I'm studying shadow work. And sometimes it ain't going to click just because you study it. You got to study it, go out in the world, submerge the experience of trying to get over it then you may have to get at your lowest point. The goal is to try to get you to your lowest point because from your lowest point, all of the seeds sink in. From the lowest point, is nowhere but up. So it's like when you find yourself and be like, man, this is the wall of the lowest point, then go learn because now you're more susceptible to intake that information and it become a part of you, right? So when I find myself at any time there's a lowest point, I might go play a Minister Farrakhan lecture on something. You feel me? I might go then listen to that book because I'm listening to it while my hubris and my ego is high. Yeah. It ain't hitting the same. But at my lowest point, it be, I become it. And mm -hmm. then I start practicing it. Then I start living a different life. And then I start rewarding myself for the changes that I see. That's why I love Ramadan. Ramadan increases that willpower. It gets yeah. you to really think about your real power. Like, you know, letting go of the food is just one aspect of really seeing the tangible will that you have with other things. Right? You 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 eat on a snack when you know you're supposed to be fasting, 
Why? And then you eat that and then it doesn't really satisfy your hunger. You're like, man, I just wasted all that progress that I made. So it's like as you make progress, you got to be careful because you got to constantly check yourself. You know what I mean? Because that's when you can get comfort corrupt and that's when you can get back into the cycle again. You got to make sure that that discipline is so strengthened that you grow new neurons and you got new habits and that old thing doesn't even entice you anymore. You feel me? So like healing is a journey. It's a process. It's something that you grow through on the daily, but you can't be afraid to take a peek in your past. You feel me? Because the person you are should be stronger than the person that went through it. And mm-hmm. now you develop a new perspective and say, I 100 percent went through that. I 100 percent was that person. I 100 percent did that. But that's not who I am. You know what I mean? Now, the value of me going through that is the knowledge, the experience that I have to empower the person I am today to be better tomorrow. So for me, I'm honest about my past with myself all day long. Any mistakes, any problems, any flaws, I'd be like, yep, you did that. All right. Right. Why? Because you own it and it doesn't become a shadow. It becomes integrated in who you are in the light. And now it's not controlling you on the back end because you ignoring it, but it's still seeping through your traits and your character. You feel me? So it's an operation that ain't easy because you may look ugly to yourself and you don't people. That's why we get dressed. We get fly. We we put on all this bravado, these filters, all this stuff. We don't want to look ugly to ourselves. We want to look great to the world. But your private self is different than your public self until you learn how to integrate those two to be one. Mm. So on that note, I want you all to meditate on that last last line you just said. Can you run that back? You got to integrate it to you have to one. Yeah, you have to integrate with your shadow self. Mm. You it, the the integration is show that your shadow self is not behind the scenes, um, controlling your life. When you actually say, "Why did I do that? Why do I keep doing that?" I know I want more control over myself, but even the things that you're trying to give yourself as orders, you can't do. You keep falling back in the mm. cycle. It's because you're not dealing with the shadow, right? The shadow of you know, there's a stress that's connected to a habit and you're not dealing with the root of that problem. So it's going to continue to show up over and over and over. So you got to be like, you know what? Go back and integrate with that shadow. That is who I am. Those dark traits, that is who I am. But now that I'm not hiding it, now that I'm not afraid of it, you know what I mean? Now you can control it. Now you have power over it. Now you're not denying its existence and it's behind the scenes pulling strings. So you have to integrate with the shadows. You know what I mean? Bring it to light. Expose yourself to yourself to enlighten yourself. All right, peace family. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Once again, like, share, and subscribe. Thank y'all for tuning in. Also, we uh, we looking for recommendations on what we should talk about in the com- in the comment section. Make sure y'all Content, drop a topic. talks, you topics, discussions. Let us know.